So often people set up tables badly in Google Sheets, whether it's the formatting that's cell by cell rather than for the whole table, the number formats, the not setting up the formulas that auto expand, the manually coloring things in, and there's nothing to block them from making mistakes. Whereas what you could do is set up a table that looks like this, where you're much less likely to make errors. It's color coded, including by row. It's got instructions here and you've got better ways to add filters rather than like this, where when you add filters, it'll just go in the wrong place. So I'm going to show you in this video how to do something like this from a table that's badly set up like this. And I bet you, you don't know most of these tips. My name is David Benheim and I have tons of videos on Google Sheets, Excel, Power BI, Zoom, Teams, PowerPoint. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe if you want weekly videos on this kind of stuff. Now you'll notice immediately that the formatting isn't great. So I'm just gonna select the table like this. I'm gonna go to format and clear formatting. Notice a shortcut, I love that. You don't get that in Excel. And then I'm gonna do alternating colors, something that's just not used enough. So I'm going to choose one of these. You can change the color of your header and customize it if you want to, and then choose color one, color two. You can add a footer if you want to, and here's how you remove it. That's all it does really, except that it's quite good at auto expands. So here if I add in some more rows, notice how the formatting comes down with it. Also happens if I add to the right, so I'm going to insert here. If I add in whatever, it may be, notice that it does auto expand. If I undo, I'll get rid of that. Okay, so here's my alternating colors, really love this feature. Next thing that I find really annoying, people do this all the time. If you have things right next to your table that are not related to the table, there's a few things that go wrong. For example, Control A will not select the table, it will only select all the way until the end and all the way from the top. Next, filters. If you add filters and you have this kind of pattern, then your filters will go too far on the right and up here, they won't be where your headers are. So if I filter for only beer, I suddenly lose my headers, which is really, really silly. So here's a tip, just have entirely blank rows around your table. So I'm going to insert and insert here. Notice that this may cause issues with your alternating colors. We'll fix that in a bit. But now if I add in a filter, if I press Control A, that will work really, really well. If you do want to fix it, go to Format and Alternating Colors and say that it just starts at A3 rather than A2. Press Done and then it's fixed. Now I'm going to add in another row here. And another thing that I tend to love doing is having um, instructions for what to do in the column. So here I'm going to say choose date, and let me add the rest and then copy and paste where it's the same one. Actually, I don't need this one, so I'm just going to delete it. Then I'm going to actually make it explicit that the people have to choose dates and they have to choose from drop downs in these ones. Always do this. I cannot stress how important it is. And go a little bit beyond your table. Make your table available to expand. So you can go to data and then data validation, and you can choose that this needs to be a date and always choose in a starting date, so on or after, or an ending date, some kind of parameter. Usually starting is what I would do. Reject input, I tend to do this. Press save, and that means that a few things. Firstly, people can't enter Wednesday. They also can't enter a date in 2014. And also they get a date picker by double clicking, which is really nice, you don't get that in the regular Excel. Next, I'm going to go like this as well go beyond and choose data validation and choose list from a range and then select it where that is and leave it like that. Reject input, press save. I'm gonna do the same here. Try and end around at the same place. Data, data validation. And here I'm going to choose this one. Leave some blanks at the end for good practice. Um, that way, if you add new ones, they will come into the list. Google Sheets is smart enough to ignore anything that is a blank, it also ignores duplicates, which is awesome. And it also allows auto-complete, which means that if I know how it starts, I can enter it. I can. I want a filtered list of all the London people, I will enter it like this, and V will take me directly there. So really, really useful, a great speed up trick to do this kind of thing, where you have a two-leveled list or a three-leveled list, and you allow people to just enter, it enters from the start of any word 
on the list, which is really great. So then numbers, I'm going to select these two together, go to data validation, and I'm just going to choose a number that is greater than zero. Now, this might seem obvious to you and something that you usually don't do. In fact, most people that I speak to don't usually do this, but I cannot stress how important it is. That way people will not make mistakes and you won't be fixing them later on. Mistakes just do always happen. Now, if you do want to take this further down, you can copy that and then you can go kind of beyond here and then you can paste special and choose data validation and that will bring it down. Notice it's also expanded my table size. That's okay. I like having tables that have room to expand. So select this row, go to format, and then you also have conditional formatting above alternating colors. So format rules here, I'm going to say text contains, and I'm going to write formula is going to be in red. Add another rule, text that contains free type is going to be green. And this might sound tedious, but I literally do this in all of my tables. That way, people know exactly what to do. And choose is going to be yellow. Notice that it's text that contains, so choose number or choose date is still valid, like that. And I press done. The idea is that anything that is yellow is restricted. Anything that is green, they can do whatever they want. And this is conditional formatting, so if this were to change to formula, then I would put formula in there and the color changes with it. Notice another step that I always like to do is have your formulas either at the start or at the end of your table. Because when people want to enter, they want to enter this column, then the next column, the next column, the next column. It might be tempting to have formulas in between, but that is more likely to lead to issues that might happen. People accidentally typing over formulas. Um, if you want to go further with conditional formatting, something that I like doing a lot is, let's say that you want the inactive to be in red. So you select this and then go to format and conditional formatting. And you are going to write in a custom formula, but just follow me because it's not that difficult. Equals dollar sign a five equals inactive. And I'm going to make that in red. So as you can see, all the inactive people are in red. And why have I done it this way? So I've said anything that evaluates to true becomes red. So equals dollar sign A5, why A5? Because my table starts in row number five and A is the column I want to test. So any column that you want to test, you need a dollar sign in front of it. And then equals inactive. You need to put inactive in speech marks and then it will work there. So if I choose someone like Sammy, who is inactive, then that will go red like that. You can see here Sammy is inactive. So it is all dynamic and if this person changes to Kong, who is active, then it goes back. So really, really useful feature there. Um, formulas. So I'm going to do sales, which is units times price. I'm going to write in equals this one multiplied by that one. Enter. And I really like this. Google Sheets will give me this suggested autofill. Another really cool thing that it does is, let's say that I wanted to figure out the gender of this person. I can write in, for example, Kong is a male. Just follow this table. And then Selena is female. And then Vate is female. Look at that. It's done smart fill. So it thinks it has a formula that can do it. Press OK. And then you can get it appearing this way. I do need a little bit of cleanup to make sure the f conditional formatting penetrates throughout the whole row. Um, but this is a really good thing that you can do for formulas. However, I like my formulas to go beyond what could happen. Now, if I drag in these formulas below into the rest of the table, this will give me errors or will give me the number zero. That's not what I want. That's pretty ugly. If I drag this one, though, this will just give me a blank. And then the moment that someone is entered in like that, then this will be filled in. So I give it something to do for what to do if the row is not entered. So I do equals if, and then I'll say a five equals speech marks, speech marks, which is the way that you do blanks in Excel, comma, speech marks, speech marks, then return blank. Otherwise return that and close my brackets. So let me copy and paste this and then go into my other formula. And I'm going to do it before there. So 
So I don't want two equal signs. And then close my brackets there. Then I get the same thing. It doesn't appear anything here, but if I drag it down to the bottom, it will give me what I need. Again, here, if I choose someone, so only now we'll make this one say an active and these will be automatically calculated after that. All right, couple of small tips, freeze panes, you may already be familiar with that. You can drag it from here down here so that you can see your headers as you scroll down. Do it from the same, from the left over there as well. Number formats. So I always like to have a comma. I tend to avoid a dollar because a dollar for me is usually implied. So I can, for example, put a dollar in there and then it's implied rather than cluttering it up in every single row in your data set. So what you can do is you can select some cells, you can copy them, and here you can go to paste special and just paste the formats. I tend to use this method. Um, that will extend your data validation, conditional formatting as well if needed. But here, if you want to get the conditional formatting extended to the end, you would go to formatting, conditional formatting, and this uh, it kind of breaks up the range there. So I just want to say that this, I'm going to redo this, it ends at I, and I don't need this comma and then another range as well. Like that, perfect. Now, um, dates. For me, this is confusing as a date because if you've got some of them like this one, you don't know if this is the 5th of June or the 6th of May. Um, you can if you look at the other ones, but what I prefer doing is setting it up so that in format, you go to number and you choose date and custom day and time and just choose this one. This is just super obvious for everyone, regardless of whether you're in US or Australia, as long as you can read English and understand the three letters for the month, this is just perfect. It's the clearest way. So this is the number format that I encourage using all the time. You'll notice as well that I have these other tables next to it. Now, these kind of tables will populate my main table in two different ways. Firstly, as we saw data validation, and secondly, formulas like VLOOKUP. So here it's saying, for example, that James is a male, and it knows that from this. So using this kind of hierarchy structure where you've got this table that populates this one with both lookups and validation gets really, really useful. And you even have a third highest level in the hierarchy where these lists will populate the drop downs associated here. As I said, I just do encourage using drop downs wherever possible um, because it just will lead to less errors in your data. Now, if you want to go a little bit further, you can select these cells and go to data and then protect sheets and ranges. And I can say that I want to protect this range, set permission. And then now with Excel, um, I really don't like the way that it's done. Google Sheets, I much prefer. You can choose who to edit it, or if you just want a soft protection, you can just say show a warning, press done. Now, once you've done that, if you try and edit something, it will tell you that you're not allowed to, or that you shouldn't do it, but you can still press okay and edit it. But generally, this will just kind of scare some people off. And if you want to do more, you can say don't show it again for five minutes. Now, you are still able to enter this bit. You're able to filter this bit. and then remove the filter. Grouping as well can be pretty good. Sometimes you don't want people to be able to see all of the columns. So instead of hiding that too many people do, I prefer doing group because group gives people the option to expand or collapse as need be. Um, I do have some grouping here where I have my instructions for things that I wanted to show. So it's just a very nice method that you can give people the option of expanding as they wish to. Um, you can do multiple grouping layers. If you do group again, this could be quite nice. And then you could do expand for level one, level two, or right click, you can expand all or collapse all as need be. If I'm gonna do totals, I do often prefer having them at the top, which is not traditionally where they are, but it just means that you can see them with freeze panes everywhere you are. And they also expand. So I could do equal sum and then just select all of this all the way until the end of the table like that. Close my brackets and I get that one. And then I could just drag that across. Now, things to avoid. Notice how these are grouped because I quite like that. Avoid using subtotals or this kind of grouping by category. Um, if you use 
subtotals, then generally you are going to make errors and it gets quite confusing. Um, if you are going to do a group like this, then just drag it down. Otherwise, if you want to analyze this, you won't know that all of these rows apply to promotion mangoes. What's much better is creating a simple table like this that allows you to just get the information that you want to, and that way you can aggregate it and get subtotals in another place if you need to using pivot tables. The other thing to avoid is avoid merging. If you merge these things, then you will often get errors in your calculations. And if you merge to have multi-row headers, so here I have two rows for headers, this will give you issues with creating pivots or adding filters. If I add a filter here, it tells you that you cannot do it. And if you go to insert a pivot table, then it will work, but it won't give you all the right columns that you need to. Pivot tables are the best way to analyze data, but you need to have your data set up in the right way. In fact, this is the better way to set up your data. Um, and then this way you can create a pivot table. Now, if you do want this for data entry, then you can have this to be an input uh, with multi-row headers and then unpivot it to get to something that looks like this using a function called flatten. I have another video where I talk about that that I'll link to here. So yeah, this is the ideal data setup way that I would prefer that would end up looking like this. So if you like this video, then I have plenty more on my channel about Google Sheets, Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using tech at the workplace, then I'm covering it on my channel. So subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for watching.